Oddly enough, the best career decision I ever made was to leave the largest and most respected company in my industry to join a business that wasn't officially registered, didn't really exist, had never done any work and had no business plan. But it didn't make any sense. Uh, it was probably a pretty bad decision on the merits at the time, but it allowed me to be part of building something. And so at the same time, it's also the best decision I ever made. Uh, I spend the bulk of my time really grounding myself in what's going on around me. And that means an hour of the news and really looking at what's happening across a range of sectors, what are the key events that will shape the day uh, in various ways. Um, and then an hour spent catching up on, on messages and outreach that I've received. So uh, what are the key things that do really demand my attention immediately? Um, and then I try to walk to work rather than drive. Um, and uh, hopefully get into a conversation or two before I, I knuckle down for a formal meeting. When I'm thinking about how I spend time, I'm trying to strike a balance between context and understanding what's going on, whether in my organization or beyond it, then engagement and interaction, helping people get to peak performance, working with others to pursue a result, and then long-term planning, strategy, and vision. I don't know if I would call what I, my approach um, ritualized per se. I, there are things I try to prioritize, one of which is to read quite voraciously. Uh, and so at any given point, I try to maintain uh, two or three books that I am reading uh, in fiction, nonfiction, etc., as a way of kind of keeping the mind stimulated and provoked. Um, beyond that, it is more about creating the space to listen and be provoked by, by perspectives. I hope it's fun working for me or with me, um, but I also hope it's challenging. I like to debate, I like to argue, I like to challenge, um, but I also welcome those things from other people. And so the only thing, the only thing that I do not accept in a working environment is a sense that the leader is always right or the boss's word is all that counts. Uh, instead, it should be a stimulating environment where everyone knows they can ask whatever question they want, but they can expect anything they say to also be questioned and challenged until we come to something that we all believe to be true. I think everyone, no matter their role, no matter their title, needs to be both a leader and a follower, and you cannot be one without being the other. Um, I take as my responsibility whenever I'm in a position of responsibility uh, to allow everyone in the team to shine and bring their best to the table. Um, and to create the space for them to challenge the direction and, and, and have their voices heard. So leading is a collective thing. It's not about the leader. It's about how a group can get to the, the best possible outcome by bringing the best out of each individual within the group. Dean Joseph Nye, who used to lead up the Harvard uh, Kennedy School of Government, used to talk about the concept of the trisectoral athlete, this idea that to be an effective leader, you needed to really understand the private sector, the public sector, and the social sector. We envision Dahlberg as becoming the premier collection of these tri-sectoral athletes in the world, able to equally work across those three dimensions of, of activity and bring meaningful change through that, uh, that skill. I think failure is always an opportunity to learn. And the first question is, and, and really, whenever we fail, it's, the first thing to do is understand why we failed, what it teaches us, and how we can avoid making it happen again. The one thing I have no patience for is a denial around things that haven't gone, that, that haven't gone according to plan. And so within a team, if things aren't going well, the first thing I would check is, do we all agree that they're not going well? And what can we learn from it? That process of feedback and learning uh, can only be triggered when, we, when what we expected to happen doesn't happen as we had expected. I would have to say the biggest impact on, on my career and my leadership style has come from my colleagues. Um, I've had the good fortune to build Dahlberg alongside an, an, a truly inspiring founder, Henrik Scobie, uh, and a team of people who've continually inspired with their talent, their passion, and their diversity, um, which always keeps challenging me to keep getting better because they're always getting better and I need to keep up. Really trying to be responsive and flexible in that context. So um, uh, focusing on, on my two little boys and, 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 and completely kicking back and relaxing with them. But at the same time, um, in terms of work-life balance, I, 
I try to integrate the things I do at work and the things I do in the rest of my life. And so that, you know, I am learning even as I am hanging out with my friends or I am enjoying myself even as I am in the midst of a hard week where, where we're actually pushing ourselves quite hard. I've been cursed with a deep sense of competitiveness. I like to, I don't want to say win, but be part of the winning team. I and a lot of my colleagues are inspired by the fact that the work we're doing is for the betterment of the world. Good is not good enough, and we always need to keep trying to get not just better, but to be the absolute best there is at the work that we do. Mm -hmm.